The Shiva Lingas. India's Karnataka state is home to a riverbed that may have once been used as a nuclear reactor. There are over a thousand mysterious features known as lingas carved onto the rocks at the bottom of the river that look weirdly like power nodules. This is not a famous place, although I really think it should be. The river Shalmala is sacred to those who live in the area, but outside the state, most people have never heard of it. When the water level drops and the river starts to run dry, the lingas appear. But what are they and what do they mean? And why are they also at a mysterious site in Cambodia? In 1969, Jean Balbay became the first outsider to study the lingas. But the Cambodian civil war broke out and nobody was able to safely return for another 20 years. Historians now believe the lingas were carved under the leadership of Sada Shiva Raya, the king of the kingdom during the 16th century. You might be wondering what a linga even is, so let me explain. In Sanskrit, linga means mark. The Shiva linga is a mark associated with Shiva, the Hindu god. Lingas are all over India in temples and sacred buildings. It's been said that lingas are endowed with Shiva's power and can help concentrate your mind if you meditate near lingas. Lingas have also been interpreted as tiny atomic reactors. They even look sort of like modern nuclear reactors from the outside. What's more, lingas are frequently exposed to water. At temples, lingas have water poured over them on a regular basis by visitors and monks. The lingas and the river Shalmala are always covered with water except during the dry season. Nuclear reactors need water too, don't they? Reactors require water to keep them from exploding. Another weird fact is that the most important Shiva temples in the country, which all boast Shiva lingas, are in a perfect straight line from one town to another. Then there's the atomic angle with Lord Shiva himself, who was said to have the destructive capability to destroy the world in a fiery blast. There are even examples of Shiva supposedly blowing up the world in old Hindu texts, suggesting there could have been nuclear war in the past. As far as scientists can tell, lingas are only made from stone. They don't contain any components that could link them to nuclear reactors. If they were used to channel energy and create explosions on a nuclear level, it was done with a technology or a power that us modern humans have no idea about. The People from the Sky In India, there are a set of enormous footprints which local folklore suggests as evidence of ancient godlike beings falling from the sky. They didn't fall quite as much as they landed gracefully, judging by the footprints. Yet the speculation arises, could this really be proof of extraterrestrial visitors? The origins and age of these footprints remain shrouded in mystery. In 2013, geologist Nitish Priyadarshi initiated an investigation to determine if the legends are telling the truth. What he found is that the footprints appear to have been carved into the rock on purpose. He believes they weren't really left as fossils millions of years ago from someone's actual foot, Rather, an unknown person carved them, and they carved something else, too. Near the ancient footprints is an engraving of what looks like a flying saucer. Nitish said the flying object is on the same piece of rock as the footprints. He thinks they may have been engraved as a way to commemorate the arrival of gods from the heavens. Gods who came down from vehicles so strange, the ancient people didn't understand what they were. If you've been watching the channel a lot, you've heard me talk about Vimanas before. In ancient Indian texts, folklore, and artwork, Vimanas were depicted as flying temples used by the gods. But many believe they were more than just fairy tales. Vimanas could have been real ships used by humanoid-like gods to travel the cosmos. Take a look at some pictures of Vimanas and let me know if you think they could be ancient interpretations of spaceships. It's not as if people thousands of years ago had a lot of sci-fi movies to get their ideas from. When they saw a spaceship, they thought it was a flying temple or a flying city. The object etched beside the giant footprints is likely a Vimana. Let's leave the strange footprints in India alone for a bit and travel across the world to the United States of America. In 1925, a very similar footprint was discovered. James Higgins came across a footprint that was 8 feet long at Busy Peak. 
The next year, newspapers in Oakland reported that Professor George Lauderback at the University of California found even more giant footprints in San Jose. Only these ones were a bit smaller, only about five feet long. What kind of creatures were walking across the U.S. with feet that big? They must have been actual giants, people who stood more than 20 feet tall. Other examples of giant footprints have been found preserved in rock near Mpuluzi, near the Swaziland border in South Africa. Then there are the footprints Nitish recently investigated in India. All these discoveries make it hard to refute that something weird was happening in this world before modern history, and it seems to have involved giants and spaceships. Ancient Astronauts in Southern Africa Recently, a new study by mainstream scientists has lent its support to the theory that ancient astronauts visited every last corner of the planet. The mainstream scientists didn't do this on purpose. They rarely try to support alien theories. However, it seems science and fringe science are starting to become dangerously similar. Researchers at the University of Leeds discovered how to unlock the potential of gold atoms. They used layers of gold only two atoms thick to make incredibly efficient catalysts. It's the newest form of gold made in a lab, with implications that could change how technology is created going forward. Each new slab of gold is 0.47 nanometers thick. Take a look at your fingernail for a second. This new gold is 1 million times thinner than your nail. This is a big deal because extremely thin gold is necessary for electronics and medical devices. As technology gets smaller, gold needs to get smaller too. Yet experts found something they had not expected when they created the thin sheets. The thin structure is 10 times more efficient than normal gold nanoparticles. Great, but what does this have to do with ancient astronauts? Almost all the big theories surrounding aliens on planet Earth revolve around gold. The Anunnaki gods of ancient Sumer came from a distant planet to mine for gold. Just like the early gold miners of the American West, the Anunnaki supposedly came seeking riches. Being an incredibly advanced society, they had no need for silly little pickaxes. They found primitive Homo sapiens dwelling in caves, teetering on extinction. The Anunnaki gifted our ape-brained ancestors with intelligence and dexterity. Then the newly created humans were put to work in the mines. The Anunnaki supposedly needed gold from Earth to continue making technological advances on their own planet. Because, just like human beings today, the Anunnaki were burning through their natural reserves. So where did all this gold mining happen? Primarily in Africa and long before the earliest civilizations in Mesopotamia long before, as in hundreds of thousands of years earlier. The story goes it was only when the Anunnaki had finished with their human slaves that they tried to get rid of everyone using a giant flood. The few humans who survived went on to start civilization in Mesopotamia. They told stories of their cruel alien overlords, which they assumed were gods. These stories were copied time and time again, ultimately making it into the Bible. So, on the one hand, you have the fact that scientists just created the world's thinnest gold and it is two atoms thick. Then you have the story of the Anunnaki. Now get ready because it's about to get crazy when these things come together. According to a fresh new study on the origin of humanity, scientists were able to trace all humans to Botswana in southern Africa. Researchers looked at over 1,200 samples of mitochondrial DNA from local Africans. The DNA proved that Homo sapiens were living in southern Africa in an isolated colony 200,000 years ago. So, ancient astronaut theorists are asking, could this have been the site of the Anunnaki gold mine? Secrets in Utah The Great Gallery in southern Utah is one of America's greatest rock art panels. It's covered in amazing pictures of unusual anthropomorphic figures. Nobody really knows the purpose of the paintings. If you do, be sure to let me know because nobody else does. The figures in the paintings seem to be human in nature, though they could easily be representations of gods or even monsters. The ancient painters also made images of birds, snakes, and spirits. Trying to date the Great Gallery has proven incredibly difficult. 
Scientists still don't know when the pictographs were made, but figure it was at least 10,000 years ago. The pictographs were likely created by a mysterious civilization known only as the Desert Archaic Culture. They thrived in Utah from 8,000 BC until 500 AD. What happened to them is unknown. The reason I'm telling you about the Great Gallery is that ancient astronaut theorists believe the figures to be aliens. Also, the Great Gallery isn't particularly far from where the Utah monolith was discovered on November 18th, 2020. 2020 was the weirdest year since the fall of the Berlin Wall. As the pandemic slowly spread across the world, weird metal monoliths showed up in random places. The monolith in Utah was found by the Department of Public Safety as they conducted a count of bighorn sheep. Fans of Stanley Kubrick films immediately noticed the similarity between the structure in Utah and the weird monolith in the movie, 2001, A Space Odyssey. I don't want to give anyone PTSD by talking about 2020, so I'll get straight to the point. Nobody ever figured out what the monolith was. More monoliths showed up in Romania, California, and Turkey, though some of these were obvious hoaxes. Looking through old satellite data, it was confirmed that the metallic monolith was installed between summer 2015 and autumn 2016. Once word got out that it was there, it disappeared. The prevailing theory today is that the monolith was an art installation, though nobody knows who put it there. There may not be a connection between the monolith and the ancient pictographs depicting what are potentially aliens. Or maybe there is something about the Utah desert that attracts extraterrestrial visitors. What do you think? Electromagnetic Anomalies If you've ever taken a trip to Mexico City, you have most likely visited Teotihuacan. A short drive from downtown Mexico, Teotihuacan is one of the greatest wonders of the ancient world. It has pyramids that rival those in Egypt. 100,000 people once lived in its structures. It also had causeways and canals, and walls made entirely of human skulls. But was Teotihuacan a city of men or of gods? Even the Aztec didn't know who built Teotihuacan. When they stumbled upon its ruins 1,800 years after it was abandoned, the Aztec thought it was a city built by giants or by their creator gods. There are a few different Aztec origin stories, one of them is surprisingly similar to the origin story told by the Sumerians. The Aztecs said the gods landed on Earth in a mysterious vessel shaped like a giant flint knife. It was shaped like Oumuamua, the interstellar object that recently passed near Earth and was maybe a spaceship. The gods poured from the vessel and made the Aztecs to honor and serve them. Perhaps it was another mining operation, this time in Mexico. When Teotihuacan was first excavated in the late 19th century, the pyramids were covered in a huge layer of dirt. Archaeologist Leopoldo Baltres was shocked because it made no sense where all the dirt came from. One theory is that the pyramids have been standing since before the biblical flood. It was the flood that caused them to be covered in so much dirt. There are more recent discoveries that are equally as baffling. For example, Researcher Marco Vigato found that some of the pyramid stones are 10 tons. They were also made from volcanic rock called andesite, which would have been theoretically impossible to cut with stone tools. In 2015, after 12 long years of investigation, a pool of liquid mercury was discovered underneath the Temple of the Feathered Serpent. Did you know that mercury is an amazing conductor of electricity and used in many electrical components, such as batteries? The liquid mercury must have been extracted and processed, then poured into the mysterious chamber beneath the temple. Many have suggested there are pools of liquid mercury underneath the Egyptian pyramids too. There are rivers of liquid mercury in the tomb of the first emperor of China. So the ancient people definitely had an obsession with mercury around the world. I don't know exactly what the people of Teotihuacan were doing with an underground reservoir of mercury, but it must have been intense. While excavating beneath the temple, archaeologists also found hundreds of small gold spheres and sheets of mica. Put together these three materials and you have the ingredients for a gigantic battery protected by heat shields. Some have suggested that Teotihuacan was a giant microchip, 
or that it was a spaceport for Anunnaki vehicles to recharge before the return journey back to their planet, with their cargo full of Earth's precious gold. The fact the builders of Teotihuacan disappeared without a trace only makes the mystery that much more enticing. Aliens on Mars One of my favorite theories for the origin of humanity is that humans came from Mars. I know they say that only men from Mars and women are from Venus, but it might just be both. The theory goes like this. There was a great civilization on the red planet millions of years ago when Mars was lush, green, and covered in oceans. Then there was a calamity and a small handful of people managed to escape on a ship to Earth. But over thousands of years, they lost their knowledge of their Martian home world and grew more primitive. It's a fun theory, but what about physical proof? Mars is a sad remnant of what it once was. The water is gone and there isn't a life form to be seen. Yet what if there are ruins that have survived in the arid landscape? And what if NASA is lying about it? Alien enthusiast and conspiracy supporter Scott C. Waring recently said he found proof of human structures on Mars. While looking at photographs taken of the red planet by NASA, Scott noticed what looks like a broken sculpture. The sculpture appears to have two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. You know, all the typical things you expect from a human sculpture. But it also has what appears to be a crown on the top of its head. Could this have been a former Martian king? Why don't you take a look at these photos and let me know in the comments if you think the sculpture is legit or if it's just a boring rock. Scott claims the sculpture looks similar to the ones on Easter Island. What's your verdict? The Aliens of San Xingdui One of the most controversial archaeological sites in the world is a place called San Xingdui in China. Some say the ancient site was home to a culture that worshipped aliens. Others, specifically Chinese archaeologists who work at the site, have called the alien theory completely unfounded. To understand the strangeness of this ancient place, I need to go back to its discovery in 1929. The ruins of a great metropolis were found in China's Sichuan province. Archaeologists dated the city to the Bronze Age, about 3,000 years ago. It's been nearly a century now and archaeologists are still flummoxed. They don't know who built the city. They know very little about the nameless culture and can only guess their traditions and habits based on the artifacts discovered. When it comes to artifacts, thousands have been discovered. The most interesting relics are dozens of little figurines that look like aliens. We don't always want to jump on the alien bandwagon, but look at these things and tell me I'm wrong. Archaeologists call them statuettes. Each one has extraordinarily exaggerated features such as big eyes, a huge head, and weirdly small limbs. It's been theorized that the mysterious culture was visited by aliens thousands of years ago and designed the figurines or the statuettes to look like their starry-eyed visitors. Lei Yu from the Sichuan Provincial Cultural Relics and Archaeology Research Institute is not happy about the theories. He explained that the statuettes are likely meant to depict gods and goddesses, not alien overlords. It might be impossible to end the controversy at San Xingdui. There are no written records in the city. Archaeologists haven't found a single text or any example of the written word. This is a little unusual because there were lots of civilizations far older that had complex writing systems. One possible explanation is that the San Xingdui culture did have a writing system, but they wrote everything on fabrics. Over the last 3,000 years, those fabrics have decayed, leaving no trace of the language behind. Either that, or maybe the alien visitors gifted them with the ability to read each other's minds. Sodom and the Space Invaders In the book of Genesis, God destroyed the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah using fire and brimstone. According to a Soviet scientist, the Bible is wrong. Sodom and Gomorrah weren't destroyed by God, they were destroyed by a nuclear blast. Who would want to set off an atomic bomb in two seemingly unimportant cities in Bronze Age Jordan? Soviet scientist Dr. M. Agrest speculated it was invaders from space. The incredible claim has added even more controversy to a pair of cities that have been controversial since the Bible. Sodom and Gomorrah were the cities of sin and debauchery 3,650 years ago. 
The Bible says that Lot, a good and holy man, was the only righteous one in all of Sodom. Long story short, God was abhorred by what he saw happening in the city's streets and dark corners. It was like Las Vegas in the 70s, but even worse and more disturbing. Lot and his family were allowed to leave the city before God sent his righteous fire to destroy it. As they left, God warned Lot and his family not to turn around. If they did, God assured them that they would be destroyed. Lot's wife didn't listen. She turned to look as God smote Sodom, and in a flash, she was turned into a pillar of salt. M. Agress argued that Lot's wife was turned into a pillar because she got caught in an atomic blast. He also said that aliens landed at the Baalbek Terrace, a mysterious slab of stone high up in the Syrian mountains. From there, the aliens launched their atomic bombs at the biblical cities in the Jordan Valley. You might be thinking the story sounds like the ravings of a mad Soviet scientist. You could be right, or maybe not. The weird thing is that I'm about to show you proof that Sodom was destroyed by an epic blast. Archaeologists recently confirmed that Sodom was wiped out by a devastating explosion. The explosion was 1,000 times more powerful than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. Just try to envision the sheer destructive power of such a device. Only this was no device. It was a space rock. Scientists found evidence in Tal el Hammam that it was hit by an exploding comet in 1650 BC. Tal el Hammam is the Jordanian city that experts believe inspired the story of Sodom's destruction. At the time the disaster occurred, Tal el Hammam was the biggest of three large cities in the Jordan Valley. It was the main center for politics and religion. Researcher Ariella Marsden said the trio of cities had an impressive population of about 50,000 people combined. These were big, developed cities with mud brick apartments up to five stories tall. Archaeologists investigating the ruins have found evidence of a sudden event that scorched the buildings. They have uncovered things like pottery pieces that were melted by heat so intense it caused rock to liquefy. In most cases like this, archaeologists turn to natural disasters for an explanation. Yet there's never been any trace of volcanic eruption, earthquake, or fire in Tal el Hammam. All the signs point to something like an atomic blast hitting the city, causing temperatures to suddenly spike to 3,600 degrees Fahrenheit. To be clear, that's the air temperature I'm talking about. Most people have a hard enough time dealing with 100 degrees. Do you have any idea of what happens when the air suddenly superheats like that? If you were wearing clothes, they would have burst into flames. Wooden structures would have immediately caught fire. Swords and spears instantly disintegrated. Mud bricks and pottery did as well. Within a split second, the whole city was on fire. And don't forget the shockwave that hit the city at 740 miles per hour, worse than any tornado ever recorded. In the aftermath, not a single person survived. Their bodies were so effectively destroyed that they were disintegrated as if hit with a mega particle beam. Bones were exploded into tiny fragments. Scientists think this was all because a comet exploded two and a half miles above the city. But do you think it could have been an ancient atomic bomb dropped by some extremely rude aliens? Let me know in the comments below. The Inner Earth Civilization in the 17th century, renowned scientist Edmund Halley came up with an extraordinary idea. He suggested, out loud to the entire world, that the planet Earth is hollow. Within the hollow chambers of the planet are incredible life forms that would shock humanity. Life forms such as our great friends King Kong and Godzilla, who as everybody knows, live in the hollow Earth. In the years following Halley's claim, scientists refuted and contradicted his speculations but the idea is still going strong today. In 2015, David Wilcock claimed there are indeed intelligent life forms inside the planet. He claimed that there are entire civilizations deep inside the planet, and they are gearing up for war against the surface. As if the 2020s couldn't get any worse, the world is about to follow a pandemic with a war against a subterranean civilization. But who is David Wilcock anyway, and why are people listening to him? David is not necessarily an authority on science or history. He is a New York Times best-selling author who has made a career of shouting outrageous claims from the rooftops. 
David has said that throughout the history of the world, multiple advanced civilizations have retreated underground. He used the Atlanteans as an example. When there was a calamity on the surface, the Atlanteans escaped into the hollow earth to continue their civilization. They apparently like the underground habitat better, though it's hard to see why. They don't even have stars down there and presumably no sunlight. Don't be alarmed though, David has a solution for the lack of sunlight. He said there are special kinds of bacteria that give off natural light. As for how you might take a trip into the hollow earth yourself, nobody knows where the supposed entrance is. Not even David. He said NASA knows about the existence of hollow planets and the government has been in contact with the civilizations beneath our feet. But for right now, the entrance remains a secret. Terraforming the Amazon There is something strange about the Amazon jungle. The strangeness involves a phenomenon known as Amazonian Dark Earth, also sometimes called Black Gold or Terra Preta. Dark Earth has been found in patches all across the Amazon. It's a layer of dark black soil up to 13 feet thick in some places. Dark Earth is incredibly different from the surrounding soil because of its fertility. Dark Earth is the best soil you can imagine. It's so good and healthy for plants that every backyard gardener would chop off a finger or two just to get a bag of this stuff. Scientists say it's rich in nutrients and decaying organic matter. The Amazonian black gold is packed full of phosphorus, potassium, and nitrogen. Most of the soil in the rainforest is kind of sandy and thin, yet it's 100% natural, accumulated in the jungle over tens of thousands of years. What makes the dark earth so interesting is that it isn't natural. The thick patches of fertile soil were created by someone or something. Mainstream scientists say it was likely ancient humans. Others think this soil may have been part of an ancient geoengineering project, a project designed to terraform Earth, making the planet habitable for the human race. Once again, I'm telling you about the Anunnaki and their mining operations. They were pretty much everywhere. They would have presumably had technology to terraform the world, making it more comfortable for their slave workers. Although why they would want to make it more comfortable for their slaves, I have no idea. In 2024, scientists discovered a lost garden city deep in the rainforest of Ecuador. The city is roughly 2,000 years old, located deep inside a jungle we used to think was only occupied by primitive tribes. This obviously was not the case. The newly discovered garden city was just as advanced as any city built by the Maya or the Aztec 500 years ago. An unknown civilization built this city and filled it with plazas, ceremonial platforms, complex streets, and everything else you would expect of a grand city. It was likely part of a wider kingdom of Amazonians. Scientists have suggested that far more people could have lived in the Amazon than in somewhere like central Mexico, and it was all because of the fertile dark earth. The Garden City is the newest discovery proving the Amazon was home to a vast empire. But there have been other weird discoveries recently as well. In 2017, scientists proved domesticated trees are five times more likely to be dominant in the Amazon than non-domesticated trees. This means that many of the trees in the Amazon were cultivated by human hands. But where did the Dark Earth come from? Was it made by the mysterious civilization that lived in the jungle? Or is the special soil left over from a great gardening project conducted by extraterrestrials? Also, what happened to the Amazonian Empire? This is the big question that everyone would love to see answered. I think it would be awesome to find out how an empire that rivaled the Mayans thousands of miles to the north suddenly disappeared without a trace. And before you ask, it didn't have anything to do with the Spanish conquistadors. The civilization of the Amazon was long gone when the Spanish arrived in South America. The Moon Pyramid We've already investigated a mysterious statue on Mars today that could be evidence of a lost Martian society. Now it's time to look at a pyramid that has been spotted on the moon and could be evidence of a lunar society. The mysterious pyramid was spotted in satellite images released by NASA. YouTuber Pachito Dominique was the one to announce the discovery. Then our old familiar friend, Mr. Scott C. Waring, showed up to share his opinions. Scott said the pyramid is convincing evidence of intelligent life on the moon. 
If there is life on the moon, wouldn't you be able to look at it yourself using a telescope in your backyard? And wouldn't it be easy to like go back and forth to visit? The moon is close enough to see clearly with the naked eye. If there were little green men bustling about in lunar cities, someone would have snapped photos by now. The pyramid in the satellite images is weirdly convincing. It's positioned in the center of a huge crater, three-sided with what looks like a long dark window on one side. It could be a shadow, it could be a pyramid, or it could be a pyramid-shaped lunar rock. Nobody knows for sure, though Scott says that he's convinced the satellite images prove that it was aliens from the moon who built the Egyptian pyramids. The Atacama Giant The Atacama Giant kind of looks like a child's doodle of a giant monster. It's a geoglyph carved into the side of a hill in Chile in South America. The giant is the biggest geoglyph on the planet that represents a humanoid figure at 390 feet long. Although it's not alone, surrounded by smaller geometric figures, it is the giant that attracts people to this mysterious and controversial site. Nobody knows who carved the geoglyph. The giant piece of artwork is in the middle of the Atacama Desert, a place where other seriously weird things have been discovered. It was in this desert where scientists found the Atacama skeleton, a six-foot-long mummy. The skeleton is said to be a human fetus, though others suspect it's a dead alien. The official explanation for the Atacama giant is that it was made by the indigenous inhabitants of the area around 1100 years ago. It's supposed to be a representation of a shaman, known in the local language as a Yatiri. Shamans of the Atacama Desert invoked the power of the spirits and made predictions of the future. They also practiced healing, making them the only real doctors around. Another possibility is that the giant is a depiction of the Andean god Tunupatarapaka. He was the central deity of the Aymara people, lord of thunder and lightning, worshipped by many small societies across South America. Regardless of who the giant is meant to be, scientists are still baffled that it was made in the first place. The reason behind its creation is also lost to history. One popular theory is that the desert culture created the geoglyph of their god as a kind of warning, making it huge so that visitors in the sky would see it and think twice about touching down. Thanks for watching! Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed! The City of Tusser Salamis is an ancient archaeological site in Cyprus, located at the mouth of the river Pedeos. Archaeologists have found evidence of human habitation here dating back to the 11th century BC, from the late Bronze Age when tribes from Turkey and Greece first settled on the island. But the site also has some interesting ties to mythology. Locals once believed the city was founded by Teucer, the son of King Telamon. He was a renowned archer, a great warrior, and he even had a small part in the Trojan War, fighting alongside his half-brother Ajax the Great. After Ajax fell on his sword, committing suicide, and Teucer returned home without his body, he was disowned by his father and banished from the kingdom. Teucer was forced to live a life of shame in Cyprus, but instead of being shamed, he founded the city of Salamis and became a hero. It's important to say that nobody knows how much of that story is true, or if Teucer was ever a real person, but his legend lives on in these ancient ruins. By the time the Romans came along, Salamis had become a province of Cilicia. It was no longer the capital, but the Romans still took interest in the city's prosperity. They built new buildings and installed gymnasiums, theaters, and public baths. And then an earthquake destroyed the place, crumbling the structures to the ground. It declined after that and was finally abandoned by the 7th century AD. The Sculpture of Decebalus The Sculpture of Decebalus is kind of like the Mount Rushmore of Romania. Overlooking the mighty Danube River on a rocky outcrop at the border of Romania and Serbia is a face carved in the mountain. It's a spectacular sight unlike any other in Rome. The face is monumental like something you would expect to read in a Lord of the Rings book about some forgotten ruler carved in the stone of a mythical land. But the truth is that the face belongs to someone who lived roughly 2,000 years ago, between 87 and 106 AD. The face belongs to Decebalus, who was the last king of Dacia, 
and battled fiercely against two of the most notorious Roman emperors ever. Trajan and Domitian, Decebalus fought three major wars. The first was against a raiding party of Romans trying to invade his region. He beat them back and managed to secure full independence for Dacia. But then, when Trajan came to power, Dacia faced invasion yet again. This time, Decebalus was defeated in the year 102 AD. Even with his defeat, he managed to remain in power. He regrouped and fought the emperor again in 105 AD, but then was utterly decimated. Emperor Trajan reduced the Dacian capital to a pile of smoldering ruins, and the last king of Dacia was dead. Now here's the twist. The sculpture of this great king was made 2,000 years after his demise. Even though it does look like an ancient place from a storybook, it was constructed between 1994 and 2004. Still, you can just ignore that part and marvel at the face of one of the last great kings of old. The House of the Eagles There are two ancient historic sites in the small Mexican town of Malinalco. The first is a stunning complex constructed by the Aztecs back in 1476. The other side is an Augustinian monastery built in 1540 named Divino Salvador, which is still in use to this very day. The contrast is amazing because one section of the town has the ruins of an Aztec temple known as the House of Eagles, carved on the side of a hill, and on the other side is a monastery left behind by the Spanish invaders. Only about six decades separate the two structures, so we can physically see in the same place just how quickly Mexico changed. The great temples of the Aztecs were forgotten, and the monumental churches to the Christian god rose in their place. But the House of the Eagles is astonishing for another reason. Like I said, it was built directly into the hillside. That makes it the only example of a rock-hewn structure anywhere in the Aztec world, and one of only a few in the Americas. The Aztecs didn't carve temples out of caves, but preferred to build freestanding structures. And here's the thing about Divino Salvador. This monastery features incredible murals of biblical scenes, but they weren't painted by Spaniards. The Spanish forced the subjugated Aztecs to do the paintings for them. The result is something truly epic in the world of Christian artwork. The Aztecs were sour about being defeated by the invaders and then forced to do their dirty work. And so they managed to slip their own religious and cosmological beliefs into the art, melding Aztec symbology with Christian ideas. The Temple of the Amada The Temple of the Amada in Egypt is the oldest temple ever found in Nubia. It's part of a larger archaeological compound with three ancient monuments rising from the sand. These monuments are all that have been spared from the rising waters of Lake Nasser. The temple was built during the reign of Tutmos III and Amenhotep II, around 1458 to 1401 BC. Later rulers built upon the original structure as the years went by, such as Tutmos IV and Akhenaten. At one point, the name Amun was scrubbed from every part of the structure in a desperate bid to get rid of the ancient Egyptian gods. It was Akhenaten who did that. But shortly after his death, Seti I restored the old gods, and the temple was returned to its former glory. Nubia is a region in the south of Egypt and the north of Sudan, defined by the first cataract of the Nile River. It was the farthest corner of the Egyptian empire, but was more closely associated with the Nubian kingdoms. They had the largest number of pyramids in the world, and were known for being a thorn in Egypt's side. Lepenski Vir Lepenski Vir can be found on the banks of the Danube River in modern-day Serbia. The site is something of an archaeological mystery. It shows evidence of habitation going back 8,000 years, but the culture that lived here is puzzling at best. We know they had their social structure, mysterious religious practices, and unique architecture, but we don't know who they were. One of the weirdest things about Lepenski Vir is the collection of stone sculptures that have been excavated from the site. Most appear to be human-like alien figures, and they may have had something to do with astronomical events. The site was discovered relatively recently in the 1960s. Serbian archaeologists uncovered 136 residential buildings unexpectedly after the construction began on a hydroelectric power plant. But at first, they didn't discover anything except the ruins. It would be nearly five years until they came across the first objects, and they've never been able to properly place them since. The thing is that whichever culture lived here, it was one of the very first in Europe. They don't have a name, 
We don't know who their dozens of bizarre sculptures were supposed to imitate, only that they may have been used in cosmic rituals. They show evidence of being the most advanced civilization in Europe during the Neolithic era. Yet scientists are left grasping at straws, trying to describe who they once were. The Ancient City of Thera The ancient city of Thera was founded about 3,000 years ago in the 9th century BC by Dorian colonists. Like many ruined cities in the Mediterranean that started during the rise of civilization, Thera has its roots in mythology. Legend has it the great warrior Therus was a descendant of Cadmus of Phoenicia and the son of the king of Thebes. He established his new city on an uninhabited island, and he named them both after himself. No matter who founded Thera, the city prospered over the centuries as a trading hub. It connected Greek cities on the mainland with those on other Greek islands. They had direct ties to places like Athens and Rhodes, and by the 3rd century BC, the legendary city of Thera had become a major maritime station. The city underwent dramatic reconstruction, changing the whole grid to better accommodate the navy. Because of this, almost no buildings from the first 700 years of its life have been found. They were all demolished or rebuilt into more contemporary structures. That does seem like the smart thing to do after nearly 1,000 years of continuous habitation. And again, like many other cities in the Mediterranean, destruction came at the beginning of the 8th century. A great eruption of the Santorini volcano buried Thera in pumice and ash, and it was abandoned after 726 AD. The Lost City of the Inca The city of Cusco in Peru was the epicenter of the Inca civilization. It was from Cusco where men and women set out to the other great sites high in the Andes, like Machu Picchu. But there was also another city in the region, one shrouded in the Peruvian Amazon and lost for centuries. It's called Paititi, and explorers have been trying to find it for the last 400 years. The closest anyone came was in 1979, when a pair of French-Peruvian explorers uncovered the lost settlement of Mameria. This proved that there are lost cities in the Amazon jungle of Peru, but that they are very tough to find. All these years later, Paititi still has not been found. Some don't even believe it's a real place, and that it's more of a ghost story than anything. The only reliable record of its existence goes back to 1600, when a missionary named Andres Lopez wrote a letter to the Vatican describing a lost city filled with gold deep in the jungle. Its name was Paititi. People are still searching for it. As recently as 2016, Expeditions have been made to locate the lost city in the jungle, but as of right now, it looks like this mysterious place simply refuses to be found. The Borobudur Temple Compounds Borobudur is a place not too many people have heard of, yet it's one of the biggest and most complete collections of Buddhist reliefs in the world. It's the biggest Buddhist temple on earth, constructed in the 9th century in central Java, Indonesia. It was an unbelievably impressive feat of engineering 1,100 years ago, consisting of nine stacked platforms topped with a huge central dome. It's decorated with over 2,600 relief panels and over 500 statues of the Buddha. And as if all of that wasn't impressive enough, the central dome is hemmed by a collection of 72 immense Buddha statues, each one sitting inside its perforated stupa. The point I'm trying to make is that the temple here is pretty amazing. It was built in a typical Javanese Buddhist style during the reign of the Sailendra dynasty. It also mixes ancient Javanese beliefs with the Buddhist idea of attaining nirvana, a kind of artistic blend of Southeast Asia and India. But just what in the world is the point of this massive megalithic temple? It was intended to be a shrine to the Buddha, just as any cathedral is a shrine to the Christian God. It is also to this day a major destination for Buddhist pilgrimages. The temple represents the three levels of Buddhist cosmology. There is the world of desire, the world of forms, and then the world of formlessness. Pilgrims must ascend the temple by moving through the three symbolic layers, winding through a system of stairways and corridors to reach the very top. Ukrainian Megastructures Archaeologists in Europe have discovered some interesting new facts about a Ukrainian megastructure discovered in a prehistoric settlement. The discovery was made near the tiny village of Maidanetsky, roughly 146 miles from the capital. And although it may be occupied by modern Ukrainians now, 4,000 years ago it belonged to the Kukuteni Trepilia culture. It was also one of the biggest establishments in Eastern Europe, 
housing roughly 10,000 people in a space of several hundred acres. Because so much time has gone by, not much evidence of the culture's social identity is left. They are most renowned for the amazing pottery scraps that have been found scattered throughout their settlements. But recently, Robert Hoffman from Kiel University in Germany used high-resolution magnetometry surveys to see what was buried underneath the soil. They uncovered evidence of plenty of normal houses, most no larger than 49 feet long. But they also found massive megastructures over 210 feet long, like enormous longhouses. So far, the team has identified over 100 of these structures throughout 19 mysterious European settlements. At first, it was all very confusing. But archaeologists now believe they were used as a sort of town hall structure. In other words, these were giant public buildings. Yet nobody knows what went on inside of them. They probably held meetings or tribunals. There's just no way we can look into the past and see what kind of community activities were happening in these places 4,000 years ago. Chogha Zanbil Chogha Zanbil is a destroyed palace and temple complex in the southwestern region of Iran. There is not much left except broken stone now, but it was once a pretty impressive place. The most important part of Chogha Zanbil was its magnificent ziggurat, likely the biggest one ever built in Iran. It's still 80 feet tall, and experts guess it was once more than double that. But the ziggurat wasn't just a towering, tiered pyramid that loomed over the city and cast a shadow over it. This was also a stunning sight. Its entire facade was once covered in blue and green terracotta, which would have made it shimmer brightly in the hot desert sun like a glistening jewel. The interior of the ziggurat was decorated with glass and ivory, and there was a huge temple dedicated to the bull god Susa standing near its entrance. People came from far and wide to see the ziggurat, treating it almost like a stairway to heaven. There were even rumors that Susa himself lived in the temple in secret and ascended to the heavens each night to rest. The temple complex was so big that it never even got finished. When it was attacked in the year 640 BC by the Assyrians, there were still a lot of projects that hadn't been finished. But the Assyrians didn't care. They burned Chagha Zanbil to the ground, and it's remained a ruin ever since. The Door to the Underworld The Aktun Tunichil Muknal Cave, also known as the ATM Cave, is located deep in the western jungles of Belize. The cave was once believed to be a sacred entrance to Shibalba, the underworld of the Maya people. For over 1,000 years, the mysterious underground system of tunnels and passages remained totally undisturbed. Then, in 1986, locals rediscovered the entrance. Archaeologists found out about it, and specialist Thomas Miller found skeletons inside. Over the following decades, the ATM cave became popular with scientists and travelers as a place to gain insight into the ancient Maya religion. The Maya used the cave from as early as 700 BC, until their collapse in 900 AD. It was a place to connect with their dark deities. However, the truth of their rituals and ceremonies has always remained elusive. We know they went down into the darkness and communicated with spirits and gods, but we don't know what that looked like. It wasn't until 2021 that archaeologist Holly Moyes from the University of California came up with a theory. Holly suggested the Maya staged elaborate performances of their creation myth, like what you might think of as live theater. They did this perhaps as a way to goad their gods into rebirthing the world following political upheaval and devastating drought. But as we already know, it didn't work. Drought decimated their food supply, and the Maya civilization collapsed. Mysterious Norse Settlement Archaeologists recently uncovered a Norse farmstead from the 10th century AD, occupied from between roughly 940 and 1300. It was likely one of the very first farmsteads to be built in Iceland when the Vikings settled there in the 9th century. Nobody knows exactly why the Norse fled Norway and settled Iceland, but many experts have blamed it on civil strife and shortage of land. Whatever the case, Iceland was firmly in the hands of the Norse by the 10th century. On the outside, this ancient settlement seems normal enough. It was discovered behind a modern farmhouse, right in the middle of a quiet Icelandic community. But the lost settlement has a mysterious past. Researchers believe it was buried following a volcanic eruption in 1362. The settlement, after lasting 400 years, was obliterated by an ice-covered volcano the Norse called Napafeljökull. 
but it is now called Orefajokul. Scientists aren't sure what exactly happened here. This site was definitely buried by ashfall, although it doesn't look like these citizens were killed and preserved in stone like those at Pompeii. Instead, it looks like the villagers knew what was coming, saw that the volcano was going to explode, and they left their homes before they could be burned alive. Vindolanda Vindolanda is one of the most impressive Roman auxiliary fortresses still standing today. It can be found at the fringe of the ancient Roman Empire, not far from the famous Hadrian's Wall. The fort was constructed in the same era as nine other Roman fortresses in the region between 85 and 370 AD. They were built to keep out the menacing tribes of the north and to protect weary travelers bringing goods in and out of the region. Vindolanda in particular was built next to the major Roman highway known as the Stain Gate. But what kind of mysteries does this fortress hold? As an active archaeological site, Vindolanda has revealed plenty of secrets from Roman-occupied Britain. Researchers have excavated thousands of artifacts, things from textiles to shoes, random wooden objects, and even a workshop. Most recently, they dug up a rare copper alloy mouthpiece from an ancient musical instrument called a cornu. A cornu was a large horn carried by the cornison, or the horn blower. He was the man in the legion who interpreted the general's orders as horn blows that could be heard by all the men on the field of battle. It was almost like an ancient blow horn. The general would give an order, the horn blower would blast a certain number of toots from his cornu, and the soldiers would know exactly what to do. Local curator Barbara Burley called the most recent discovery really exciting. She said we already knew that these kinds of instruments existed, but finding physical examples is next level. Discoveries like these at Vindolanda are helping historians paint a much clearer picture of how Roman legions functioned, and of course, of what everyday life at Roman fortresses looked like. A big shout out to Carol Freeman and Denise Ramos Gonzalez. Thanks so much for watching. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe to join the Origins Explained family. Burkina Faso The ancient metallurgy sites of Burkina Faso are fantastic and yet sort of unbelievable. Archaeologists have found multiple sites with evidence of metalworking stretching back to 800 BC. These were once grand villages and towns where the people worked heavily with metal. The production of iron was a huge blessing to the culture and economy here, yet modern historians can't understand how it all happened. 2,800 years ago, a group of people living in the harsh lands of Burkina Faso suddenly developed tools and started working with metal. They mined everything from gold to marble. In other nearby regions of Africa, these metals were things of luxury. Not many local cultures had access to the raw metal material or to the advanced technology to mine it. There are five main metalworking complexes spread throughout Burkina Faso. Each one was responsible for its own iron extraction. The sites are all abandoned these days, left with the ruins of draft furnaces and ancient mining equipment. We don't know why the sites were abandoned, what happened to the people, or how they became masters of metal when everyone around them was still struggling with stone and copper. Newly discovered Egyptian settlement The fabulous city of Marais was founded on the shores of Lake Miratus, Egypt, during the days of Alexander the Great. That's about 30 miles from Alexandria. The settlement started in the 3rd century BC and grew to be a major industrial center and port. It was inhabited all the way until the 8th century AD, watching dynasties rise and fall. The city stood through the collapse of ancient Egypt, the rise of Roman occupation, the introduction of the Byzantines, and then was destroyed in the Islamic period. Recently, archaeologists made some interesting discoveries while excavating Marais. Researchers with the University of Warsaw uncovered an entirely new precinct from between the 6th and 8th centuries. They came across small buildings that had been built on the ruins of an old Roman farm producing wine. It's a shocking discovery because it shows that even 1400 years ago, Roman ruins were ruins. The only difference is that instead of preserving the ruins, the people who came after built over them. There's more mystery to be had here as well. Researchers believe the neighborhood may have been used by pilgrims in the 6th century 
who were on their way to the mysterious Christian shrine in Abu Mena. This was long after the days of the Egyptian gods, when most of Egypt was occupied by Christians. After the Islamic conquest, though, that all started to change. The latter city of Katalhuyuk. The proto city of Katalhuyuk is in present day Turkey, located within the modern city of Konya. 8,000 years ago, Katalhuyuk was a small society with a population of between 3,000 to 8,000 people. It was one of the most bizarre ancient cities in the world because it had no streets, no alleyways, and no conventional way into the metropolis. It was built entirely of square houses piled one next to the other in a tight grid. You can think of the city like a cube. There were thousands of dwellings, but they were all wedged next to each other like cubicles in an office. The only way to get from one cubicle to another, or from one dwelling to another, was by climbing and crawling. You would have to climb a ladder to the roof, then crawl across the roof and descend a ladder into somebody else's house. There was no other way to get around. To make things even more interesting, researchers believe there were bodies buried underneath the dwellings. Researchers from Adam Miskiewicz University recently excavated one of the larger mud brick houses and found that it was built on top of a layer of 12 clay platforms. Researchers believe these platforms hide bodies and that the locals may have buried their loved ones right beneath their own feet. Wolsey's Air Wolsey's Air is a prehistoric landscape in the United Kingdom currently being devastated by coastal erosion. A team of researchers recently investigated the coastland here looking to record the effects of the climate crisis, only to accidentally discover an ancient piece of history. They found a rare shard of pottery 4,000 years old, along with a mysterious stone box. The shard was found sitting precariously on the shoreline and likely would have been swept away the next time the tide came in. Excited about the discovery, the volunteers launched a drone to survey the area. They identified evidence of human habitation from the Neolithic era, such as a half-submerged stone house almost totally swallowed by the rising sea. The thing about Wolsey's Air and many coastal sites across the UK is that they are slowly being destroyed. As the coast is washed away, the villages once occupied by ancient Britons are being washed away as well. This is a rare example of coming across Neolithic history as it is in the midst of being buried underwater forever. The mysterious stone box has experts particularly excited. It's made from thin slabs of stone, perhaps recycled roof tiles. Circular holes were made to secure the slabs, turning the object into a prehistoric lockbox. It may have been used as a cold storage, like an early fridge. It also may have been a hiding place for Bronze Age contraband. The East Bay Mystery Walls For over 100 years, the people in California's Bay Area have been perplexed by the existence of mysterious stone walls. These walls are scattered across tall ridges, from San Jose to the Berkeley Hills. Some of the walls are in long, straight lines. Some form obtuse angles. There are even the ruins of mysterious rectangular constructions among them. What nobody knows is who built them, how old they are, or what purpose they served. Some have guessed voyagers from a bygone age, visitors from space, and vanquished Native Americans. What we know for sure is that the oldest public mention is likely in an issue of the San Francisco Chronicle published March 8, 1896. The story back then was that the stone walls baffled experts and were an unsolved mystery. The paper also speculated that the walls may have been built by a forgotten race of people, or maybe even the Aztecs during an expedition north from their main home in central Mexico. The walls themselves are mostly in poor construction. They were made by stacking local limestone rocks one on top of the other. None of them were cut to fit, there was no mortar involved, and they could have been placed by just about anyone. A couple of kids could make a similar wall in a day with enough motivation. Despite the simplicity, the mystery is still unsolved. It's been an enigma since at least 1896, but no one has ever dated the rocks to see how old the walls are. In all honesty, the walls look like perimeter fences around somebody's property. They may have been built around a house or a farm, either by a lost race of people or by early European settlers. Ice holes. NASA has made a bizarre discovery on the Arctic surface. 
Researchers with NASA's Operation Ice Bridge found holes perforated in the Arctic ice, holes whose origins are still unclear. According to NASA, the amount of ice in this particular part of the Arctic, north of Alaska and near the Beaufort Sea, has decreased significantly since 2013. Scientists with the operation were measuring the thickness of the ice when they made the mysterious discovery. There were no holes here before, but now it looks like somebody poked a bunch of them in the surface with a giant metal rod. Scientist Nathan Kurtz said he doesn't know what may have led to the formation of the holes. Nathan said he had never seen anything like it. Other experts believe these strange breaks in the ice could be seal breathing gaps. Seals make these gaps in thin ice so that they can easily come up for air. Whatever the case, holes in the ice is not really good news. Researchers believe the holes are likely the result of warmer water flowing into the Arctic from Canada's Mackenzie River, melting what little ice remains. They may have been made by seals, but they were only possible because the ice has gotten so thin. The LSU Mounds At Louisiana State University, there are a series of mounds that could be the oldest structures in America built by human hands. The mounds are right outside the university. They look like ordinary grass hills you can find in the countryside. But in reality, these things are ancient, dating back at least 11,300 years. This is according to LSU geology professor Brooks Elwood, who doubled the age of the mounds from 5,500 years old based on bone fragments. Brooks took a core sample from the very bottom of the mound from a layer of ashy material. When he put the sample underneath a microscope, he found tiny fragments of bones. These bones had been burned in cooking fires, and they belonged to humans. What this means is that if confirmed, the mounds at LSU are older than the Egyptian pyramids. This discovery could change history and everything we know about human habitation throughout the Americas, not only in Louisiana. As for what the purpose was behind the mounds, that's still a mystery. Researchers have speculated that whoever made them descended from the Clovis culture. The Clovis lived tens of thousands of years ago across North America and hunted mastodons and other prehistoric beasts. Thanks for watching! Which of these ancient places would you love to visit yourself? Or have you already? Let me know in the comments below. And remember to subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you next time. Bye!